Getting started with Square Takeoff. The easiest way to manage and complete a construction online takeoff. During this video, we'll cover the basics of Square Takeoff. From logging a bid, to uploading a set of plans, to completing an online takeoff. To get started, simply go to www.squaretakeoff.com. Once you're there, select the login button located in the upper menu. Here you can enter the information you used when you registered for the software, such as the email and password. If you haven't registered for the software, simply select I want to register to fill out the information and get started on your free 14 day trial. Let's log in. Once we log in, our dashboard will appear. Within the dashboard, you can see a lot of different information. For example, you can see how much monthly storage you've used. You can see how many projects you've shared. You can also see how many bids and projects are starting for that week. You can also see the bids versus bids awarded in a couple different charts. And you can break them down by year, quarter, month, or week. You can also see the latest news of Square Takeoff. For example, any new features that are released or any additional news. Next, to get started with a new bid, you'd want to select the monitor, which is our bid management screen. Once we select the bid management screen, our bid management calendar will appear. Within this calendar, if you have jobs viewed, this is where you would go to access those jobs and to be able to view the takeoffs that you've completed. For this example, we're going to create a new project. To create a new project, we simply select the create a new project button. From here, we can enter in the company name, company owner, a project name. We can rate the project. We can also select the status of the project. And for this here, we're going to keep it as new. We can select a project bid due date. And let's set this for this. We can also set a time that this bid is due. We can also select a project start date. Once again, a time that that project would be starting. You can also select the video tutorial button, which will show you a video. They'll give you a more in-depth look at exactly how this functions. Next, we enter the contact information of the person we would like to utilize. We enter in the phone number and the email. We can also enter an address of where the project is going to be completed at. We can also go to the project details. Within our project details, we can select the unit of measure. We can also color code the project. We can also enter in an estimated total project value and also an estimated bid value. We can also select any project notes and enter in any project notes that are unique to this project. When ready, we'll hit save. And there we go. As you can see, the Fairview Circle job has appeared. The next step is to upload a set of blueprints. To do that, you want to simply select that job. Once you do that, you'll see that a green Start Takeoff button appears. Simply select that to get started. Once you do that, you can either drag a set of plans or browse for a set of files. The files that we currently work with is most P JPEGs, TIFFs, PNGs, BIPs, GIFs, and PDF files. For this example, I'm going to drag and drop a set of files. Once you drag those, you can see how quickly those upload. Once everything displays 100%, you can then hit continue. And now we are ready to go ahead and view those files. So let's hit the start takeoff button again. Once we do that, it'll take us into the job. If you uploaded multiple files and they do not seem to appear, you can select the notification bell located in the upper right hand corner to check the status of that upload. As you can see here, we have no files queued, we have no files processing, and we have eight files that have finished. You can also view how many projects you've shared from here. Once again, if not all these files have appeared, you can refresh your screen by simply selecting the refresh button. 
and I'll refresh the pages. At this point here, you can now see our plans appear. To zoom in and zoom out, you can simply roll in and roll out on your mouse wheel. You can also pan around by simply right clicking. If you're using an iPad, you can use the pinch to zoom feature or simply utilize your finger by pressing down on the screen to pan around the blueprint. If you need to rename any of these pages, simply double click those items and rename those as needed. You can also reorganize these items by simply dragging them and relocating them. If you need to delete a page, simply select the delete button. You can now delete that page. If you like to print a page, we also have a print button located here. You can print all documents or simply print the selected document. Once you do that, the screen will appear allowing you to print. Let's get started and scale our page. To do this, simply select the scale button. Once you select the scale button, you can select the measurement type you'd like to use. For this example, we're going to use Imperial. And we will go ahead and use the 12 foot dimension line. Let's go ahead and hit start. At this point, you simply click from the one end point of that dimension line to the opposite end point of that dimension line. By doing that, you've now set your scale. And you can see that by an indication arrow in line. You can repeat this step also going vertically. And we will utilize the 16 foot. So once again, select scale, select imperial, enter in our measurement, select start. Then once again, repeat the steps that you did horizontally. By doing this, setting a scale in both directions allows for 100% accuracy. Now that we've set our scale, we're now ready to digitize. We can now select our, one of our digitizing tools. We can either select the area, the linear, or the count. For this example, let's go ahead and select the area. For this area, I simply want to measure the guest bedroom carpet. I have a couple different area types, such as the standard area, the roof area, and cubic yards. For this example, we'll simply select the standard area. If you select the roof area, you can then enter in a pitch that you would like to take into consideration for the roof. If selecting the cubic yard, you can enter in a depth, allowing for you to output the total cubic yardage. We can now add a price per square foot, Let's go ahead and do that, and let's select the color we'd like to utilize. We're now ready, we simply hit the start button. We can now simply point and click around the perimeter of the room to capture the total square footage of that area. When done, simply select the end point to stop, or select the stop takeoff button located in the upper menu. Once we do that, you can see that our total square footage is 237.04. Let's now do a measurement of the exterior walls. To do that, let's select the linear button. Type in our name. And just like the area tool, you can select from a couple different items. For example, standard linear. Wall area what allows you to enter the wall height and the number of wall sides that you'd like to measure. You can also select the linear cubic yards, which once again enters the linear wall height and your linear width. For this example, we'll utilize a standard linear. We can now enter a wall width of six inches. Once again, select the color we like to use and enter a price associated with that. 
When ready, simply hit start. If we accidentally click too many points, we can simply select the undo button, to unclick those points, and take us back to our previous point. Then we can continue with our measurement. Once again with this measurement, you can either double click the origin point to finish a line, or we could have selected the stop takeoff. You can now see that we have a total of 225.56 linear feet. And now let's count some windows. From here, once again, we can select the color we'd like to associate with this. We can enter the price per window. We can also enter in a size of the count item. And let's say this is 30 inches. We'll go ahead and now select start. From here, we can now go ahead and count our windows. When done, simply hit the stop button. You can now see that we have a total of 10 windows counted. If you'd like to hide any of these layers, simply select the eyeballs to hide the layers. Once again, if you'd like to print this item with all these layers on, you can simply select print, print selected document, and you'll be able to print that item. Next, let's add a note. Add a note, simply select the note button. Let's enter a note such as When selecting your transparency, zero is more transparent, where 10 is less transparent. You can also browse to an image that you would like to associate with this note. For example, maybe you had a broken window that you would like to show. You can simply select the browse button and add that window to this note. If you're using a mobile device, you can simply select the browse button and if you would like to take a photo with your mobile device, if you have a camera, simply select the take photo functionality within your mobile device, take the photo, and then add it to the attachment of this note. At this point, we're going to go ahead and hit start. And there we go. When you're completed, you have a couple export options. When you select export, we can export either to an HTML, and once again, just like the print feature, we can export all, which would be all digitized items for every single page, or simply that selected document. Let's go ahead and hit that selected document. At that point, you have a document that you can print. You can also export this to Excel. Next, we'll cover the license management system. Within the license management system, you can add additional licenses or start your license subscription. To do this, simply enter the account information, such as the billing information. You can also enter in your billing details. 
and also the licensing information. Thank you for watching How to Get Started with Square Takeoff. To learn more or to view other how-to videos, visit www.squaretakeoff.com.